very much for having me here. Um, like Nisha said, the UN Women and I go a few years ago actually, and um, it's obviously been a relationship that I probably cherish more than most other relationships I've had besides my parents, uh, because the ideology that we have is exactly the same and what I've been taught by my parents, um, and that comes from UN Women to me. Uh, my story is not as funny as Tajimul, so I apologize for that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, or I'm not that great a storyteller, but um, it's a very simple story. It, I started playing tennis when I was six years old at a time when uh, a girl playing tennis in Hyderabad was unheard of, uh, where I came from a, a family full of cricketers, including my dad and Everybody that you name, uh, we, I have, including my husband now, but, uh, <laughs> and um, when I, uh, when we, when my parents uh, actually said, you know, she's going to play, she's going to play tennis, and my aunts and uncles, they were like, haan, theek hai, khelne ja rahi hai, lekin kali ho jayegi, dekhna, koi shadi nahi karega, I mean, I was six, guys, like, for, for God's sake, right, so, um, so my parents were like, what does that mean? Like, I'm, And I come from a family of two girls and that's it. So till today, even after everything that I've achieved or tried to achieve, still when people uh, meet me and they say, Aapka koi bhai nahi hai? and I say, nahi. and they're like, Are. and I'm like, no, that's fine. Like, <laughs> it's absolutely okay. Um, because we've never felt that need, you know, which uh, like ma'am was earlier saying, you know, okay, it's, now I'm pregnant and every time I meet someone, the first question is, I re or rather the dua is, quote unquote, ke, oh, ladka ho jai, main dua karunga. I say, bhai, please mat karo ye dua. Ladki ho jai, dua karo. Kyu aap ladki ki dua karo? So that is the sort of mindset that we grow up with, consciously or subconsciously. And when we come out and try to speak about it, we are labeled as feminists. And for me, that word just doesn't do it. It doesn't do it because why is there no word for a man speaking about men's rights? Has, has anyone thought about that? Never. But when you speak about female rights or feminism, feminism, you're taken as a feminist. And no, I don't think I'm a feminist. I think I'm a person who deserves equal opportunity like we all do. Whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, it does not matter what gender you are. You should have equal opportunity. It doesn't matter what I can do or what a man can do, it, that doesn't make us equal. What makes us equal is the fact that we have the opportunity to do the same thing. So for me, that is the most important. My parents always, always taught me and my sister to um, follow our dreams, no matter how unconventional they were. Even if that meant, oh my God, wearing short skirts and playing tennis and getting dark and, you know, and risk of not ever getting married. But... Um, <laughs> And we have. I, uh, my sister has become a business businesswoman, which is completely different to me. And I was a tennis player. I am a tennis player right now. I'm a mother, but um, and it has been a pleasure and an honor to grow up in my family. But I realized that how privileged we were to come from that family because of the amount of people in this. Forget country in the world, which might be a bit more pronounced in this country, but it's all over the world. Till today, we fight for equal prize money. We have to justify why as tennis players, we should make the same prize money that the men do. So that means this inequality is everywhere in the world. It's not just in this part of the world. Um, so i just like to say that today I've become a fan of this little girl. And... Um, well, one of the reasons is, of course, because of who she is and the way she spoke. And I wish I had her sense of humor. But um, more because I come from a Muslim family, a conservative family, and from a small city of Hyderabad. Um, at least then, when, when, I, when I thought of playing tennis. And I can only imagine how hard it must have been for her parents. I can just, I mean, my parents, I thought my dad you know, is the greatest hero because he stood up against everyone and said that I don't care. They used to mock my parents and say, what do you think that your daughter is going to become Martina Hingis? And fate had it that I had to win three of my grand slams with Martina Hingis. So,
So, and I can just imagine what her dad must have gone through to fight against her. And it was not even a sport that was, let's say, whatever they say, boyish or girlish. I mean, it was something to do with martial arts, which is not something that you see a lot of girls doing. So it is an extremely difficult thing to do. And all my respects, sir, all my respects. But you don't want to kill him. But all my respects. And wholeheartedly, as a woman, I feel so proud to be sharing this stage and uh, to be here today. And I just want to say that, like Nishtha told us, I don't think 2089 should be a goal or a number at all in our heads. You know, I, I, if I had a choice, 2030 wouldn't be a number. But um, you know, we have to be realistic. So let's all try to work towards that number, at least to have a number in mind and work towards that. And tomorrow, whether I have a boy or a girl, I I think it's very important for a woman and a girl to believe that she is empowered within, in order for men to believe that she's empowered. And that's exactly like Ma'am said that. You have to believe that you're equal to be treated equally. And whether I have a boy or a girl, that is exactly what is going to be taught to them. And a secret is my husband wants a girl very badly. <laughs> and I said I don't have any control on that anymore. <laughs> but but um, yeah, so thank you very much again for having me here and uh, you know sharing this little part of my, my story, but also being a witness to so many inspiring stories. Thank you.